Hello and welcome to this film which is all about energy changes in chemical reactions. It's the first in a series of films about the standard level energetics topic from the IB Diploma Chemistry course and hopefully by the end of this film you'll have an understanding of what we mean by enthalpy and um, how chemical uh, systems can turn enthalpy into heat and how we can represent enthalpy changes using things called enthalpy or energy level diagrams. Okay, so I suppose to introduce the topic of energetics, let's say what it's all about. And as the name perhaps suggests, it's all about energy. And even if you haven't studied chemical energetics, you're probably aware of the fact that there's a lot of different forms of energy. And this topic mainly focuses on two forms of energy called enthalpy and heat. And heat en energy is something we're mostly quite familiar with. Okay, but enthalpy can be quite an alien topic, so let's have a look at what we mean by it. Now, in order to kind of explain it, I'm going to relate enthalpy, which is maybe unfamiliar, to a more familiar situation where perhaps we've got an object at the top of a hill, or perhaps it's starting at the bottom of the hill, we're having to put energy in, we're having to use kinetic energy, and we're converting that kinetic energy into potential energy. So this object, when it's at the top of the hill, has a lot of potential energy. It's got the potential to do work, perhaps by falling off the hill. Okay, And as this cyclist moves down the hill, this potential energy will be being converted into kinetic energy, and it will be escaping. This potential energy will basically be escaping as kinetic energy. Okay. What we know from the law of conservation energy, of energy, hopefully, is that the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy in this system, assuming there's no other losses, is constant. Because the law of the conservation of energy says that energy can't be created and it can't be destroyed. There's always the same amount of energy in the universe. Now, if we're kind of okay with this uh, fairly simple physical system that involves two types of energy, then the idea of enthalpy and heat shouldn't be too different, okay? Because enthalpy is like a chemical potential energy, okay? So any chemical system that has the potential to do work has enthalpy, okay? And we can put energy into chemical systems by supplying heat. And if the heat is converted into enthalpy, then the enthalpy of that system will rise. If the system converts enthalpy into heat, then its enthalpy will fall because it's having to use some of that enthalpy and turn it into heat. Now what we'll see in a moment is that there's basically two different types of chemical process. Ones that absorb energy and turn it into enthalpy and those that release energy by converting enthalpy usually into heat. So let's have a look at those. So first of all, we'll look at exothermic reactions. Now, exothermic reactions can, I suppose, conveniently be thought of as things that get hot. And I suppose the name here, exothermic, so thermic relating to heat, and exo, this means that heat is escaping. Okay? Now, you might find it a little bit confusing, and some people do, that if heat is escaping from somewhere, how can something be getting hot? Well, bear in mind that a system which is taking its enthalpy and converting it into heat is going to be losing heat to its surroundings. So the heat is escaping from the chemical system and the surroundings are getting hot. Now, if we see how we can represent this on an, something called an energy level diagram, we'll see here a, a fairly simple energy level diagram. We should really, I suppose, strictly be calling this enthalpy because we're talking about the potential energy of a chemical system. And if we start high, if we've got a lot of enthalpy, and we convert that enthalpy into heat and that heat escapes to our surroundings, then the enthalpy of the system will fall. Right? because heat is being released from this chemical system. It's not that the system is getting colder, remember, because it's not losing heat, it's turning enthalpy into heat, and that heat is being released to the surroundings. If we look at this energy level diagram here, I suppose this is more correctly labelled now, we've got a potential energy here, and here on this one we've got marked delta H. Now this is the enthalpy change, okay? And if the enthalpy has gone down from the reactants to the products, 
and heat has been released because that enthalpy got converted into heat, then the enthalpy change, delta H, is negative. Okay, and that's a really important thing to remember, that for exothermic reactions, heat is released, the enthalpy falls, and therefore the delta H, or the enthalpy change, is negative. Okay, now if we think about endothermic reactions, well, I suppose they could be thought of as being the opposite of exothermic reactions in that they get cold. Okay, and that's not because the chemical system is getting cold or losing heat. It's because it's absorbing heat energy and turning it into enthalpy. Okay, so the surroundings give heat to the chemical system and it locks that heat up as enthalpy. The surroundings are losing heat and therefore they're getting cold, so these reactions feel like they're getting cold. And if we see what that looks like on an energy level diagram again, then in this simple case we're starting off with some reactants and we're absorbing heat. They're not getting hotter, right, because that heat is getting turned into enthalpy. So the products have a higher enthalpy than the reactants. The system doesn't get hotter. The surroundings, in fact, get colder because they're giving their heat to the chemical system. That system converts, as I say, converts that heat into enthalpy and its enthalpy rises. If we look at this slightly more uh, complex diagram, but really not a lot more to it, except it's got the enthalpy change labelled on it again, we can see that the enthalpy is going up from reactants to products. Heat is being absorbed and therefore delta H, or the enthalpy change, is a positive number. So just like it was important to remember that in exothermic reactions, heat is released to the surroundings, here heat is absorbed from the surroundings and the enthalpy change is a positive quantity. Okay, so what we hope to achieve at the outset here was to understand what the difference between enthalpy and heat are, and I suppose how they are related to things like potential energy and in more familiar systems, and also to show how we can show how the enthalpy of a um, system is changing using something called an enthalpy level diagram or an energy level diagram. As usual, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me, or even better, post a comment on YouTube so that other people can see what you've said.